Hey guys, it's Dr. Oob again. I figured on this rainy day, uh, the day two days before Thanksgiving, that it'd be a good time to talk about uh, squashing inflammation. Inflammation is also often categorized as a, a fire, an inflammatory fire that's going on. And there's things that you're eating, things that you're doing or not doing that are contributing to inflammation. So I want to talk about a few supplements that I like to use for anti-inflammatory benefits. Um, there's certainly other things you can do for inflammation like managing your stress, balancing your hormones, and eating the right foods and removing any food triggers, gluten and dairy being the most common food triggers. But the supplements I often like to use to turn off inflammation, my favorite one is curcumin. Uh, tons of people use curcumin every day. I take it every day. It's, a, it's, it's the active ingredient in turmeric. Turmeric is a root that's found. Uh, you can usually find it at your local grocery store. And you can blend it up and eat it and you can spice food with it. Um, but it's really not that well absorbed unless it's cooked and uh, black pepper oil seems to help it get absorbed. So many people take it in the supplement form and they prepare it in the right way that makes it the most absorbable. Um, if you take curcumin, you want to take about 500 uh, to 1,000 milligrams once or twice a day. If you really have inflammation, you really want to take about a, uh, 750 to 1,000 milligrams twice a day. But um, if you've got more mild inflammation, then 500 milligrams once or twice a day will certainly work. The other one I really like to take is fish oil. I kind of think that everyone should be taking fish oil. I believe that's one of the reasons why Americans suffer with so much inflammation is because we really don't eat a lot of high omega-3 fish oils. Um, it was said that our ancestors ate way more omega-3s than we do today. Um, and our ratios are completely flipped upside down. I don't remember the numbers offhand, but we definitely don't need enough. So most people need to consume about 2,000 milligrams of fish oil a day in order to maintain adequate fish oil levels. If you're not sure how much fish you're eating every day, then you can, there's, there's charts and things online that you can look up and see how much fish oil you need. It's an average daily basis of 2,000 milligrams. So if once a week you gorge yourself on salmon, then maybe you're meeting your 2,000 milligrams a day. But what I usually tell people is, um, especially if you live in Austin or drier areas where we don't eat a lot of fish, just take 2,000 milligrams of fish oil in order to get to your, your goal. You want to make sure there's an appropriate amount of EPA and DHA when you flip over the bottle. Don't look at how many milligrams are on the cover. You want to flip it over and look at how much EPA and DHA are actually in it. When you add up the EPA and DHA, you need to be taking 1,000 milligrams twice a day. So if the bottle only says 300 milligrams of EPA and 200 milligrams of DHA, then that means you need to take two of those pills twice a day. You need 2,000 milligrams total. The, the best ratio for anti-inflammation and health seems to be 700 milligrams of EPA to 300 milligrams of DHA roundabout, and you take that twice a day. People that take supplements with that ratio really seem to hit the magic numbers on their, their lab testing when I test their fish oil levels. If you've never had your fish oil levels tested, I encourage you to get that tested. There's several labs that offer that value. Many doctors don't even check that. Um, the final thing I've been using a lot of lately is CBD oil. CBD oil is a um, it's based from the marijuana plant. The marijuana plant makes two main oils, THC, which gets you high, and the other one is CBD. So the, the plants they grow to make the CBD are actually really low in THC, which is the one that gets you high. And so they grow these plants with high CBD, and then in the manufacturing process, they actually re remove as much THC as they can. There's supposedly trace amounts in it. You can't ever get it all out, but CBD is an excellent anti-inflammatory. The dose that I usually start with is one milligram. I usually start with people on the sprays because the sprays you can easily titrate up the dose and make sure you're not having any weird side effects from too much anti-inflammation. If you do it too quickly, um, sometimes you can have weird side effects. So I start low and just increase the dose slowly. And the CBD oil used to be really expensive, but now the price has come down significantly. And you can usually find it at your uh, compounding pharmacies. And of course, we have all these in the office if you need any of them. My final um, favorite anti-inflammatory supplement is NAC, which boosts glutathione. NAC is the precursor to glutathione, so it really helps with um, antioxidation, anti-inflammation. Uh, so that's my top four favorite anti-inflammatories. Uh, hopefully you can, you can find these at your local store and take them if you're struggling with inflammation. And of course, it's always good to test your inflammation levels before you start on a regimen so you know if it's actually working or if you need to change the dose, increase the dose, um, or just try a different therapy. So I hope that helps. If you like this, then please share it and click the like button and um, tag someone if you know they, they have trouble with inflammation and need some help with it. Hope it helps.